Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, the Father, the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I know you guys too. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. In ways wherein in the words or in the teaching of Saint Peter in today's readings, we have been perhaps lacking in the way of engaging as key to God's triumph and glory and victory in the divine will. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call the sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God, the Father, to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the peaceful, the paschal mysteries on earth, bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages and ending through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane, profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, 
and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Christ, when we heard this, then who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God then has granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then I will go in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. The gate keeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus 
use this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, I say to you, or Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters to me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pastures. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have light and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. I came so that they may have light and may have it more in abundance. That's the very last line of today's Gospel, John 10, meaning chapter 10, verse 10. The abundant life Jesus gives to you and to me or offers to all, the entire humanity is fullness of life and life which will never perish as referred to in yesterday's gospel and no one can take it out from you or from me and that that light is light eternal. There's nothing more that answers the most profound longing and yearning of the human heart except what Jesus offers. And again, the most profound yearning and longing of the human heart, which I've been referring to here, is number 27 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Of the entire humanity, of which one? Whether a believer or a non-believer. Saint Peter, in the light of today's first reading, translates this to us in his teaching translate translates what this abundant life this fullness of life in what he shows to us that the key to god's triumph the key to god's victory the key to god's greatest glory is each one doing the divine will. That's today's first reading. We think, of course, the divine will, since we have been mentioning that here since last year, because we have a course on this here for five months or 20 Wednesdays, we think it is new. There's nothing new. We have been praying and crying out loud, Your will be done. Moses, what's that? Your will. Your divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, St. Peter did not just show us that there will be 
No matter what, God's glory, God's triumph, God's victory, He also knows that ultimately God, or not just ultimately, now and forever, God controls everything. It's not the people that tries to shape this world according to their will, according to their interest, according to their ideologies. That's what St. Peter shows in today's first reading. Again, it is not new, but the message is new. Or, uh, using the words of St. Augustine, ever ancient, ever new. Now, where, where are we going with this? What is for us to remind ourselves or to keep on remembering that as the world darkens even more, it is for us to respond to what Jesus says, stand up and walk. Walk to where? To Him, with Him, in Him, through Him. Why? Because he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. We learn this now, or before we engage in this journey or just journey with God, In what way the world is getting darker and darker and darker even more? Well, we see what's happening around. Pope Benedict, we know him, is still around, still alive. Praise God, thanks be to God. On December 21, as few days before Christmas, 2010, I remember that very well. I was at St. Luke's, looking outside the window, reflecting on what Pope Benedict said to the central government of the church, right? in what was called the Eternal City. He said, the sun sets over the entire world. Just look into that image. The sun sets over the entire world. He was talking about the world that is getting darker and darker and darker. It's almost 12 years back, 2010, we're around 2022. The hope is for us, with our faith, to bring the gladness of the future into the pains of our situation in whatever light we can share by doing, by engaging with the divine will. I said, what is that, Father, that is so too abstract? Well, the divine will is in the written word of God. Because the divine will is Jesus. And Jesus' life 
thanks be to God, was written by four evangelists. And all the writings of Scripture is about God. Now, why were they able to know all those writers of the 72 or 73 books of Scripture? Why were they able to write the wisdom of God? Because with the divine will, they were doing lecture divina. We have said this a hundred times and even more. Our course in Summer Faith Formation in 2012, five months, was nothing but Lixio Divina. But it, there were copies there at the back of the uh, Magnificat a few days ago. If you got them, you can go into the pages and practically every issue of that misery. It has reference to Lixia Divina because it is what the church, the church teaches us to engage before we come to Jesus as in his own body and blood, soul and divinity, we engage with his word. For what? Why do we read? Why do we pray? Why do we meditate? Why do we contemplate on or about the Word of God? So that your word, my words, your actions, my actions will be shaped by and determined by the power and the truth of God's Word. This is key to world transformation. A world that is shaped by the power and the force and the truth of God's word. Not a church that is adjusting and adjusting and adjusting to the ways of the world. Because we know it. There are leaders in the church who are no longer a moral force or a spiritual force, but they look like sociologists or anthropologists or psychologists and all kinds of issues they talk about except morality and spirituality which is the only thing that does not ever will crumble and fall. So therefore, St. Peter's teaching is very, 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 very different today for us. If we meditate on the first reading and of course the gospel teaching us that God is in control and the more this world gets transformed if we follow the way for the ways of God as he asks us to be his disciples and apostles. It's all right. We continue to pray for the holiness of everyone in the church, especially the leaders, that especially the leaders will become a moral and a spiritual force, not adjusting the church to the ways of the world, but shaping the world according to the power of God's word. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for, the, for peace in the world, the peace that comes from the Lord. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who continue to suffer. But in, their, that in and through their pains and trials and difficulties and sufferings, they will never lose hope. That their sufferings are never useless. That their sufferings can be redeemed. That they are offered as one with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. For this we pray to the Lord. 
but also Sikh and Maral Martin Briyaka. And everyone in our intentions that they will have God's healing, that their healing will bring them one closer and closer to Jesus. For this we pray to the Lord. For the eternal rest of God, the faithful departed, for those in most need of God's mercy, for them we pray to the Lord. We pray for the eternal rest of Josepina Tabisura, who is to rest in peace. For her, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we offer our particular prayers deep in the depths of each one of us. That the Lord will continue to bless us, hear our prayers, and for each one of us to be in union with Him, because as that is the heart of the divine will. For this we pray to the Lord. All these heavenly Father we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to you that is we have received. The bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work up in my hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for to you, grace we have received. The wine we offer you, through the divine, work of human hands, it will become our spirit. Reverse and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, that as you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may hear or may bear fruit in particular happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. By in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the, sac the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God, heaven and earth are full of glory. Blessed is he.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he himself, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the child, and once more giving him, she gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we open, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and administer to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring you to the holiness of charity. Together with Francis the Pope and Myron, our bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy in us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious mom, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and be praised and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, for that we will graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of God, 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 and
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to Apostle, Peace, I give you my peace, I give you look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we give to each one a God's sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the fall of the supper of the Lamb.
Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. Hail Mary. Lord 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 As announced yesterday, there will be no Mass today and tomorrow on Wednesday because there will be, I mean, noon time at 12.15 because they are working. There will be there were people working in the church uh, installing something here, so we will have no adoration also. Am I right in that? No, it was at 12 15 Mass. That was announced yesterday, right? What's that? Anyway, I checked that with you because uh, I was listening twice to the announcement. I, I did not understand, <laughs> except that there was no mass. But you will be working here, so I'm not too sure whether we should have adoration because the, the people will be working here the whole day. Anyway, because you can stay for a while for some prayers and then the workers start to be here, maybe it's the time we can disperse slowly. 